You want to know a secret about the ACT math section? Almost everything on it is stuff you learned freshman year. You see, the test isn't hard because the math is hard. The test is hard because of the tricky ways they ask the questions. So the way to get a great score isn't to spend hours and hours studying math, most of which you probably already know. The way to get a great score is to understand the tricks they use in the questions. And guess what? I'm about to show you three of the most important ones. The ACT is hard, not because the math is hard, but because they ask questions in tricky ways. And that's okay, because you're about to learn three of their biggest tricks. And when you learn how these work, your score is going to rock it up. The other thing that's going to rocket your score up is a free two-week crash course designed to raise your ACT score five points fast. It's completely free. You can sign up right down in the link in the description. On the test, plus and minus signs always mean factor. So that means if you get this question, the first thing I want you to see is that you have a minus sign. Now you might be tempted to cross off the 14s off the top and the bottom, but you can't. You can only cross stuff off that's multiplied. You can't cross things off that are part of a plus or minus phrase. Instead, ask yourself what you have that's the same on both sides of the minus sign. Well, you have a 14. So factor the 14 out to the left and put what's left over inside the parentheses. Now, you know you've done this right if you can multiply the 14 back through the parentheses and get back to where you started. You see, we won't, don't want to change the value of anything. We just want to rewrite it because, just like magic, that 14 isn't added to anything anymore. It's multiplied, so we get to cross it off, and we can say, yes, this was, in fact, the stupidest way in the world to write 12. C is your right answer. Good job. Remember, when it comes to exponents, you can only add exponents if both the base and the exponent are the same. So if they give you this question, before you immediately guess answer choice A and get the question wrong, I want you to notice that you have a minus sign. What does a minus sign tell you to do? That's right, factor. So what we wanna do is see what we have that's the same on the left and right side of that minus sign. Well, we certainly have a three on the left and right side of the minus sign. In fact, we have 33s on the left and right side of the minus sign. So we factor out three to the 30th and put what's left over, three to the fourth minus one inside the parentheses. Now, three to the fourth, happens to be 81. Now that's a handy one to know. It saves time on the test. The other way to think about it is that three to the fourth is the same as three squared times three squared or nine times nine. Either way you get to 81. Now 81 minus one is 80, so that is answer choice C. Nice job. Take a second to read this. Hit pause if you need to. Okay, so it looks like they have us on a number line with star C at 10 to the 17th and star B at 10 to the 15th, and we're being asked, what is the distance between stars A and B? Well, they tell us that the stars are equally spaced. So that must mean the distance between B and C is exactly the same as the distance between A and B. And we can figure out the distance between B and C. It must be 10 to the 17th minus 10 to the 15th. Now, before you get all excited and pick answer choice A and get the question wrong, I want you to slow down for just a second and see that you have a minus sign. And what does that minus sign tell you to do? That's right, factor. And what you do is you see what you have that's the same on the left and right side of the minus sign. And if we look, we see, well, we definitely have 10 on each side of the minus sign. In fact, we have 15 tens on each side of the minus sign. So we factor out 10 to the 15th, and we're left with 10 squared minus one in the parentheses. Now, 10 squared is the very same thing as 100, so 100 minus one is 99, and our answer choice is C. Nice job. So one of the most powerful tools you have when dealing with hard fractions is to multiply the common denominator through the entire equation. And the reason is, as you'll see, that eliminates the denominators altogether. And the sooner you get rid of denominators, the sooner your life gets easier. Now, the easiest way to find a common denominator is to simply multiply the denominators together. And in this case, the common denominator is 
root 3 times x, so we multiply that through the entire equation. Then we just cross stuff off that's the same on the top and the bottom. So on the first term, the root 3s cross off. On the second term, the root 3s cross off. And on the other side of the equation, the x's cross off. And just like that, we have a very simple equation and not a denominator in sight. So this is pretty simple to solve. We end up with 2x equals 2 times 3. Remember, root 3 times root 3 equals 3. So 2x equals 6. That means x equals 3. Very nice job. Okay, this one works the very same way as the last one. Multiply the common denominator through the entire equation. In this case, we can use 4x as the common denominator. Now, if you wanted to use 8x, that's fine too. It'll totally work. All right, now we just cancel stuff off. So the x's cancel on the first term, the x's cancel on the second term, and two goes into four, two times. The four x's cancel on the third term, and remember, you have to multiply through the entire equation, so make sure to multiply the four x on the right side of the equation too. Now this becomes pretty easy. Four times four is 16, minus two times five is 10, plus six, because we had six left over on the third term, equals 12x. And notice, we don't have a denominator in sight, so solving this is a breeze. We get 12 equals 12x, x equals one. Okay, great job. So anytime you're asked to multiply exponents together, that's code for get the bases the same. And that's because when you have the bases the same, multiplying exponents is really easy. Let's take a look at this one. So we have 27 squared times 9 cubed. Now 27 and 9, they'll both reduce down to a base of 3, because 27 is the very same thing as 3 cubed. Now we still have to square that, so we get 3 cubed squared. And 9 is the very same thing as 3 squared. Now we still have to cube that, so we get 3 squared cubed. Now to raise an exponent to another exponent, you multiply the exponents together. So we get 3 to the 6th because 3 times 2 is 6 times 3 to the 6th because 2 times 3 is 6. Now here's the great part. As soon as you have the bases the same, all you do is keep the base and add the exponents. So this just became 3 to the 12th. Very well done. Okay, take a second to look this question over. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, well, it certainly seems intimidating and confusing, but it's really not. By the time we get all the bases the same, this thing's gonna be a snap. So the first thing we need to do is we need to turn that 27 into three cubed. 27 is the very same thing as three cubed, but then it also needs to be raised to the K. That's fine, we can leave it like that right now. Now 18, we can break down 18 because 18 is the same thing as two times nine. Now it's 18 to the 12th, so it has to be two to the 12th times nine to the 12th. Okay, next step. Well, that nine isn't broken down all the way and we wanna get all the bases the same, so let's turn that nine into three times three. Now it's nine to the 12th, so it has to be three to the 12th times three to the 12th. Okay, look, now we got all the bases the same. We just have twos and threes in our bases. One more step, three cubed raised to the K is the very same thing as three to the 3K, because when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply them together. And just like that, we have all the bases the same. Next step, we get to do something great. We get to cross off the two to the 12th because we have two to the 12th on each side and there's not a plus or minus sign in sight. So we actually just get to cross those off. And what that leaves us with is three to the 3K equals three to the 24th. So 3K must equal 24. K must equal eight. Nice job. The key was get all the bases the same, then everything becomes a lot easier. Okay, this totally messed up, confusing and intimidating statement is equal to which answer choice? Okay, don't panic. We know for sure that plus signs mean factor. So the test is just screaming at us to factor that statement, so we will. We have two to the k plus one by every single plus sign, so we'll factor that out. And then we'll put what's left over inside the parentheses. Now we know we've done it right if we can multiply that two to the k plus one back through the parentheses and get back to our original statement. And we can, so that's perfect. All right, next step, let's just add the stuff inside the parentheses and we get four. All right, 
Now we're in the land of multiplying exponents. And when we multiply exponents, that always means get the bases the same. And that's no problem because four breaks down to two squared. And now that we have the bases the same, we multiply by keeping the base and adding the exponent. So what we get is two to the K plus three, answer choice D. Very good job, that's a very high level question. Okay, great job. So the three tricks are number one, plus and minus signs mean factor. Number two, multiply the common denominator through the entire fraction in the very first step, because that gets rid of the denominator and we hate dealing with denominators. And number three, multiplying exponents means get the bases the same. As soon as you have the bases the same, it's really easy to multiply the exponents together. Now these three tricks come up all the time on the test. So knowing these three tricks is definitely gonna increase your score. And don't forget your free gift, a two week crash course designed to raise your ACT score five points fast. Okay, great job, see you next time.